the New York Yankees in the 1930s. Almost as good, if not better, than Grandma's apple pie. Today we're featuring Don Hefner, who was a team member of the New York Yankees during that era, and got to start playing alongside none other than Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Joe DiMaggio, among others. We'll provide you some little known facts on Don, showcase some great photography and memorabilia from that era that once belonged to Don. So please join us today on this episode of History and Relics. Donald Henry Hefner was born on February 8, 1911, in Roserville, Pennsylvania. Baltimore, Maryland, some 70 miles east of Roserville, is where he entered professional baseball in 1929, playing for the then minor league team, the Baltimore Orioles. Don was exposed to some legends of the game early on while in Baltimore. Here is a photo of Don and Ty Cobb together, Cobb showing him some of the tricks of the trade when it comes to batting. Don was a successful player and landed the second baseman's position with the New York Yankees in 1934. He had some pretty big shoes to fill though, playing with the likes of other infielders such as Gehrig, Lazeri, Cressetti, and Rolf, but he fared pretty well for himself. There was a funny story involving Don playing second base during spring training of 1934. He was placed directly in the line of view of Babe Ruth, playing right field. Now some people thought it was Babe's job to watch over the rookie. But when they broke camp one night, the Yankees made a stop in Jacksonville on a night when Don's former team, the Baltimore Orioles International League, was in town. A young reporter from the Baltimore Sun asked Ruth during an interview there, How is Hefner looking? And Ruth replied, well, Who the hell is Hefner? It probably would have been better to ask how the kid at second was doing instead. 1934 also marked the last year the Bambino, Babe Ruth, played for the Yankees. Number three was earning a salary of just over $37,000 a year. That's about $725,000 today. He was definitely enjoying the fruits of his labor in the house that he built. His longtime pal, number four, Lou Gehrig, was right behind him in salary, earning more than $25,000 a year. Gehrig also won the Triple Crown that year and was named the AL Banning Champion. Then there was number 10, Don Hefner, earning his rookie salary of $3,000 or $58,000 today. Ruth campaigned to be manager of his beloved Yankees, leading up to and throughout the 1934 season. Yankees owner, Jacob Rupert, offered Ruth a manager job over their top minor league team, but he didn't bite. When rumors started of Ruth possibly retiring if Rupert didn't name him as manager of the team, that ultimately led to Rupert trading Ruth to the Boston Braves in February 1935, a deal that never lived up to the hype nor promises to Ruth. Don finished out the 1934 season playing in 72 games with 241 at-bats that resulted in 63 hits, 29 runs, and 25 RBIs. His batting average was 261 with a slugging percentage of 320. As for the rest of the team, the Yankees played in 154 games during the regular season with 94 games won and 60 games lost. They finished second overall in the American League. 1935 was nearly a repeat of the prior year as the Yankees again came in second place during the regular season with a record of 89 wins and 60 losses. Hefner received a small salary increase to $4,000. Then in 
and while his batting and slugging percentages increased to 306 and 444, he only played in a total of 10 games that season with the Yanks, resulting in only 11 hits, 8 RBIs, and 3 runs in his 36 at bats. However, for some part of the season, the Yankees sent Hefner back to the minors in Newark before bringing him back again in September under a contract worth $350 to finish out the 1935 season. 1936 would prove to be a phenomenal year for the Yankees. While this was the first year without Ruth, it was also the first year for rookie sensation Joe DiMaggio. DiMaggio hit 29 homers and 129 RBIs in his debut season, third only to Lou Gehrig and Bill Dickey. Gehrig had come off an MVP season in which he hit 49 homers and drove in 152 with a 354 batting average. Hefner again seen little action in 1936, playing in only 19 games during the regular season, which accounted for 48 at-bats, resulting in 11 hits. His batting average had slipped to 229, and his slugging percentage had slipped to 313. The team finished first in the league, winning the pennant with 102 wins and 51 losses. That took them to the World Series against the New York Giants at the Polo Grounds. Hefner, though, was not on the World Series roster as he underwent an operation for appendicitis just a few short weeks before the start of the series. Nonetheless, Hefner enjoyed receiving his ring, though, when the Yanks defeated the Giants four games to two, becoming the world champs. Tony Lazeri hit a grand slam in the World Series, only the second person in history at the time to do so. Joe McCarthy was named Major League Manager of the Year by the Sporting News, becoming the first recipient of the award. Sometime during spring training in St. Petersburg, Florida in 1936 or 1937, is when Don met and fell in love with his soon-to-be wife, Dorothy Elizabeth Sackett. Dorothy once said that she got her introduction to both baseball and Don through Uncle Al. Uncle Al was Al Lang, a prominent businessman and politician, but best known for his work in bringing baseball spring training to the St. Petersburg area. Dorothy was born in or near the city of Oberlin, Lorain County, Ohio, in 1914. She later moved with her parents to St. Petersburg, Florida. In 1932, Dorothy won a photographic beauty contest and was named loveliest girl in Pinellas County, Florida. After their spring training romance, Don and Dorothy soon exchanged vows and they would later have one child, also named Dorothy, born in 1939 when the family lived in St. Louis, Missouri. 1937 was starting off great for Don and teammate and close friend Red Roth. Don was not only making over $5,000 a year in salary with the Yankees now, he was nearly back to where he was in 1934 by appearing in 60 games, having 201 at-bats resulting in 50 hits and 21 RBIs. His batting average was up to 249 with a slugging percentage of 328. Much of Don's increased play came by way of teammate Tony Lazeri, who was suffering from a fractured right hand. Don did a brilliant job and earned a lot of respect from his teammates, who felt that he was well qualified to be Lazeri's successor. The season did have a few bumps in the road, though, especially with another of Don's newer teammates, outfielder Roy Johnson, who joined the Yanks from the Red Sox in 1936. One month into the 1937 season, the Yankees lost two in a row to the Tigers. Johnson thought that manager Joe McCarthy was grumbling over the losses and quipped, What's the guy expect to do, win every day? In a horrible stroke of luck, McCarthy just happened to overhear him. Almost as soon as he returned to the team hotel, McCarthy called general manager Ed Barrow and demanded that Johnson be waived immediately. Barrow obliged, thus making room for Maslin, Ohio native, Tommy Henrich, to take the spot on the team roster. With another winning season in hand, the Joe McCarthy-led Yankees would duke it out once more with the New York Giants in a rematch of the World Series. And by this time, Tony Lazeri was back in the lineup. Again, the Yanks overtook the Giants 
but this time in four of only five games to clinch the World Series. And it was Tony Lazeri who scored the deciding run of the series for the Yanks. Sadly, Don's time with the Yankees would come to a close at the end of the 1937 season. Don was traded to the St. Louis Browns along with $10,000 for shortstop Bill Nickenbacher on February 15, 1938. Don always felt that the move was due to tensions building in the Yankees' front office over unpaid or disputed hospital bills from his appendicitis operation that occurred in the prior year, but the Yankees' reasoning behind the move is unclear. Nonetheless, Don was a good ball player and infielder for the Yankees and had the respect of many a teammate and ball players around the league. For a guy that never hit a home run while wearing a Yankees uniform, his play at second base more than made up for it. In many cases, though, his talent was overshadowed by the greats and future Hall of Famers that surrounded him. After all, when your teammates are Ruth, Gehrig, DiMaggio, Lazeri, Cressetti, Roff, those are some pretty big acts to follow, but Don managed to hold his own and became a champion in his own right. We would like to dedicate today's presentation to Don's daughter Dorothy and her husband Tony, who have been wonderful friends throughout the years and who have graciously shared great stories about Don, along with many of the photographs you've seen here today. And may this especially be dedicated in memory of Dorothy, whom we lost in 2017. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. So until next time everyone, this one's history.